In this video, we are going to go in depth into nominal regression, understand it both mathematically, see how it fits in the GLM framework, get some intuition for it, and also see how to run it in R. As mentioned in the last video, there are two types of response data. There's nominal, in which the different categories don't have any obvious hierarchy or order between them. And the way to model this is called the baseline category model. And in the next video, we'll go in depth into ordinal data, in which different categories do have a natural order to them. The idea of the baseline category model is that since the probabilities sum up to one, we don't need to model all C categories. And so instead, we model C minus one categories and treat one category as the baseline, which means probability wise that it's equal to one minus all the rest. The exact choice of the baseline is not critical, but will change the results we will get from the regression. In the notation in this lecture, we're going to use the last category, that is category C, as the baseline. But different code implementation use different baselines. For example, the multinum function in nnet library uses the first category. The vglm function in vgum library takes the last category. And in Python, the mnlogit function from stats models takes the first according to alphabetical order. So it's something to watch out for when comparing results across different implementations. Now, what do we actually want in this model? We are trying to model C minus one probabilities using C minus one different linear predictors, X times beta one up to X times beta C minus one. Notice that there are C minus one different betas. The condition is that each probability will be between zero and one and that the sum of the C minus one probabilities will be less or equal to one. The way to achieve this is by using this logit variant where we take the log of the ratio of each probability to the baseline probability. So log pi j divided by pi c is equal to the jth linear predictor. Doing so ensures we get what we want and that the restrictions are met. Note that we have the jth subscript over the betas because we have c minus one different betas. So a lot of coefficients. Also, I've omitted the i index per observation that should have been in the pi's and the x's. We can use this model to find out how the probabilities relate to the linear predictor. We invert the relations to get this thing over here. Then using the fact that the sum of probabilities are equal to one, we get this thing and then we can isolate pi c. And then plugging it back to the previous equation, we get that pi j is equal to this expression over here. Turns out that this is also a GLM. We can put this in expo family form or more accurately in EDM form, exponential dispersion model, which is a subgroup of the exponential family that can be analyzed using GLMs. The form is now for multivariate distributions. So Y is a vector and theta is also a vector. This is the EDM form we talked about in my GLM videos. If we are able to put the distribution in this form, then we can analyze it using GLMs. For example, for a categorical distribution, y will be a vector of c minus one y's, and theta is this vector over here. B of theta, the log normalizer, is equal to this function over here, a of phi is equal to one, and c y phi is equal to zero. If we put all of this together, we get the desired categorical distribution. The one over a and the c are canceled. y dotted with theta gives us this, and b of theta gives us this using laws of logarithms and remembering that the sum of the c minus one y's will be equal to one minus y c, we get this expression over here. Taking the exponent, we get this. So this thing over here will give us both this and this. And also notice that the sum of the pi j's will be equal to one minus pi c. But then these cancel out, so we get the categorical distribution. For multinomial, we use the same trick we used in the binomial case. We divide by m to move to the empirical ratios. So now we define y dash, and that y dash can be modeled by a multivariate GLM. The theta and the b theta stays the same. We can alter the a of phi to be one over m, and c y phi to be this function over here. If we use the canonical link function, then we relate the theta directly to the linear predictors. Notice we can also write this in matrix form like this. Each beta here is a vector of size p. Note that we can also incorporate different size m's into this model by using weights instead of the a phi. 
This is similar to what can be done in binomial regression. Just like in other GLMs we saw, there's a special relation between the mean and the variance that is captured by the B function. The mean is the gradient of this B function and the variance is the Hessian. Here's the vector of the first derivatives. If we look at the diagonal of the Hessians, we'll get this. And if we look at the off diagonals, we'll get these terms. To get the log likelihood, we can start with the regular distribution here for the categorical and continue as follows. We use the trick here, which is the inverse of the trick we did before, where we basically add zero to these values using some math and replacing the logic functions with the linear predictors, we can get here. We can also expand the dot product to the sum over p's. Derivatives with regards to a specific kth element of beta j will be thus equal to this. And note that this is actually equal to this. Since we are trying to get to values of beta where the derivative is equal to zero, this means we are trying to set the x-weighted sum of the y's to be equal to the x-weighted sum of the pi's meaning we are trying to set betas such that the pi's are more or less the same as the y's, which kind of makes sense intuitively. Note that the changes to the multinomial distribution are very minor here, and this concept still holds true. We'll only have a factor of m over this expression, but it will cancel out, and the c function will not survive the derivative anyway. We could also have used the general likelihood analysis from before. We start with the expo family form, since we are using the canonical link, we get that these cancel out. And I wrote here the different ways we can take the derivative, either to the vector of all beta vectors together, or to the specific beta j vector, or to a specific k element in the beta j vector. The unit deviance is defined like this, where the t function is equal to this. In both categorical and multinomial, this is equal to the following and thus the residual deviance is equal to the sum of this over all observations and also estimating the pi probabilities using the estimated coefficients. For the code, we'll use the iris data set. We can see the different species we have here. We see that the first category is Setosa, the second is Versicolor, and the third is Virginica. There are several packages in R we can use, for example, the VGAM library. We can use the VGLM function, this takes the last factor as the baseline, and if we run this, we get the following results. We see we get two betas, two intercepts, and two slopes. The first is for Setosa compared to Virginica, and the second is for Versicolor compared to Virginica. We'll understand a bit better what these coefficients mean in a second. We also get the residual deviance, and it says in the end that the reference group is level 3, that is the last level. Now, we can change the levels of the data if we want to get another reference group. The wrong way to do so will be to use the relevel function. The problem with the relevel function is that it changes the first factor, and VGLM only cares about the last factor. So for example, if we use the reference Setosa, nothing changes. If we use the reference Versicolor, we basically simply switch 1 and 2. If we make it Virginica, we push Versicolor to the second place and Setosa to the third. But this is also because we already switched between Setosa and Versicolor. So I think the preferred way will be to use the factor command and simply pass to it the order of the levels. And then the third level is the baseline category. Now we can also use the nnet library and the multinom function. Here it uses the first level as baseline category. So to get the same results as before, we have to pass it the levels in this order, which was also the original order. We see that we get identical coefficients. If we plot the linear predictors, we get something that looks like this. Let's try to understand what we're seeing here. We see that when x is below around 5.4, both Versicolor and Virginica are below zero. What does this mean? If we plug this into the model, we see that this means that both pi 1 and pi 2 are smaller than pi 3, which means that the most likely category is 3, meaning Setosa. So for an x value below this, Setosa is the most likely class. Above 5.8, both are above 0, and so both pi 1 and pi 2 are bigger than pi 3, but Virginica has the highest linear predictor. So this means that Virginica is the most likely class. Between around 5.4 and 5.8, there's a small gap where Versicolor is the most likely class. This also makes sense a bit if we plot the different classes versus the x. We see that it fits the results we got. 
This is it for this video. In the next one, we'll look into ordinal data. See you there.